hello and welcome, of course, to tonight's webinar with Girls on Track UK. We are focusing tonight on mechanics in motorsport. So I'm very pleased to say that we've got four, uh, well, at the moment, three mechanics joining us. Uh, and Cleo is here too. So we've got Hello. mechanics joining us. Welcome, Cleo. <laughs> uh, missed our little chat just beforehand, but uh, you are very welcome, of course. Well, Cleo, let's start with you. Just to let you know, of course, we are recording this. Um, so if you only can watch a little bit of it, today um it is going to be a, um, able to look on our motorsport uk youtube channel you can also look on the girls uk uh, girls on track uk community facebook page as well and there's also all of the other webinars we've been doing as well so do make sure you check on to that as well and see what else has been going on but like i said tonight we're going to focus on mechanics cleo you are uh, ready and uh, welcoming into the first <laughs> first chat we're going to have it looks quite blowy where you are yeah, I'm, I've literally, I'm sat in the pit lane at the moment at Croft. <laughs> and the there's glamour. no one here. <laughs> the absolute glamour, of course. Uh, well, Claire, yeah. let's start with you then. You do lots of different things, including um, W Series as well. What are you doing this weekend? Just explain a little bit about your job role. Um, yeah, so this weekend we're actually doing, uh, working with uh, Fox Motorsport. We're running the GT3 720S McLaren um for the british gt championship so that's what we'll be doing um i'll be working as one of the mechanics that weekend um i've also got pit stop practice as well which would be a good bit of fun um so yeah it should be a good weekend though <laughs> a good bit of fun so what we'll do is we'll speak to each of our panelists um and see what they do and, and explain a little bit about their background before we kind of get into the q a session if that works for you so Cleo, we will come back to you very shortly uh, make sure you stay nice and warm there it's actually a lovely day today in the evening lovely. so <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave you there for a second um erin let's go to you you are currently at the moment in your office in the yes. william Jeff one headquarters <laughs> you said that the car has just arrived from australia uh, so yes. just talk us through a little bit about your role and what you do yeah so actually the car got to us we got the main freight shipment back at about three o'clock so literally on the left of me I can see Latifi's car sat out there they're just stripping it now to try and it's got to go off to be repainted so it's all hands on deck to get them away tonight um the rest of the freight actually arrived with us yesterday so behind me is my department this is sub-assembly which is where I work um we deal with pretty much everything that comes on the car so we pre-assemble most of the components in our department before we then pass them on to the race team so a lot of our job is service work mainly when things come off the car we service everything get it back out to the guys as quick as possible but so yeah this is what i've been doing for the past year um i've worked for different championships up until now but this is the first time i've been it in one place for such a long period of time which is quite nice actually yeah it's nice to set down some roots and get with a team that i really really enjoy working with and i've got a great group of people behind me so it's a really good place to be have you just come off Australia time or are you? Uh, no. So luckily I wasn't in Australia. Um, we, so there's a lot of us that rotate in our department. So someone else was at the track for the first few. So we take it in turns, which is quite nice. We're mostly here on factory support. Um, we run on UK time. So we don't, <laughs> we don't, well, we try and provide as much support to the track as we can to our trackside technician. So we do often get random texts and phone calls at stupid o'clock in the morning them asking us <laughs> where certain things are or what's wrong or what they need to do to fix things but most of the time we stick on factory time and we just communicate through teams so well, we'll come back to you of course uh, in a moment yeah. um let's go to Tanea from team sport welcome as well just explain a little bit what you do and, and your background into becoming a mechanic um so i started off uh, at team sport when i was at college um so doing like a couple of days a week uh, at college, I did um, motor vehicle engineering and then I kind of progressed at team sport. So I'm now the first female head mechanic in the whole company. Um, so the previous head mechanic wasn't that great. Um, so I kind of just wormed my way in there um, and then worked my way up. Um, my normal day is just servicing carts, fixing anything that's broken. Uh, so I maintain a fleet of 40 go-karts, so it's like commercial karting, so it's like making sure that they're safe for customer use and stuff like that, um, but it's pretty hands-on because it's just me, so yeah. Wow, okay, well we'll get more into that I'm sure very soon. Uh, Charlie, let's go to you just quickly, and um, we might have a few issues with Charlie just because um, 
kind of the issues with 4G and all sorts. So if we lose Charlie, we'll try and uh, try and bring her back, of course. But um, Charlie works at, within uh, PowerMax in the British touring cars, and they've had um, a bit of a busy time at the moment. Charlie, are you still with us? Yes, I'm still here, still here at the moment. <laughs> Just explain then, Charlie, a little bit like the rest of us. So what, what exactly is your role? Okay, so I'm um, one of the mechanics on the British Touring Cars, the Vauxhall Astras that we are running at the moment. Um, I've been here with this team now probably for about seven years. Um, previous to that, I've done uh, several different other uh, touring cars over the years, probably dating back to the early 2000s. Um, and I've also done um, a stint at um, Subaru World Rally Team as well, where I was lucky enough to, uh, to be on one of the cars there and, and travel around the world, which was just incredible. Um, great thing to see the world and just do something that you really enjoy. Great. OK, well, we have had some questions obviously come in ahead of the webinar tonight. So we'll we'll go through a couple of those. But please, if you are joined, do make sure you go to our Q&A session and uh, ask a question as well, because these lovely people are here to answer your questions, of course. And um, in terms of how we do the questions, I'll, I'll kind of bring it all out and, and ask maybe if someone wants to you know on the camera say they want to answer it more please put your hand up from from the panelists but um i'll just kind of do it uh in terms of anyone can answer really and um, so let's go back to you cleo I, I mean what kind of things would you say this is one of the questions that that's come in um what would you say are the things that you did when you were younger that have most helped you throughout your career to, to kind of get to where you are I don't think the main thing is probably just actually having a passion for it because if you've got a passion for anything, obviously then you'll be more willing to learn about stuff. Um, I was quite fortunate again that my dad had cars when I was growing up as a kid. So I was always getting quite involved with him at sort of quite a young age, those kind of things. But yeah, if there's any way, obviously, you know, sort of getting in and helping out sort of with anyone, friend, even just anyone, literally friends, family, um, sort of even offering a bit of experience yourselves or work experience with some people nearby if you've got any way of getting there um so yeah i just think those probably things would be the way that i kind of got it myself really um something i could recommend to others in future yeah getting in that one i mean you're what currently sitting in a pit lane at the moment so obviously your job is pretty hands-on um yeah. in, in terms of your sort of day-to-day -day routine i know we're not always in it seems like we're always in pit lanes but we're not always but probably actually you are. What is it a bit late? <laughs> it's been most of the time. I've literally done a four and a half hour drive, jumped out, got on the Wi-Fi, and here we are. Um, yeah, I, I do spend most of the time. Uh, obviously, we've been a lot in the workshop over the winter. So obviously now we're coming up to the first race weekend. So we will spend, I mean, I've got seven weekends in a row on race weekends. So wow. a good solid almost two months every weekend somewhere. Um, so yes, yeah, so it will be busy and it's quite expected. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's something you want to get into um you know that could be potential expectations if you know and again if you love it you, you don't mind it so much <laughs> we all love getting up at five in the morning for track day. That's exactly <laughs> what we love to do and um, erin we've got a question that's come in from you from Maisie. she's got in touch so please do get your questions in and she wants to know erin what university did you attend and, and what course did you take for your role so actually i, I didn't take the traditional route so at school I studied normal GCSEs so my original plan was to sort of get more into the engineering industry not necessarily in motorsport but just anything in general and then when I sat my GCSEs at school I was like I'm not doing this again and dropped out of all my six form applications and applied to study motorsport mechanics at college um, so I did a two-year course at college and then so my route was not actually to go to university however when I was working self-employed when I came out of college I decided to start studying with the National Motorsport Academy. So this allows me to do um, a bachelor's of science in motorsport engineering online. It's a part-time degree. Um, you can do it in your own time. I've just finished my second year. Um, I've been doing it for two and a half years now. So you can get f up to five years to complete the three-year degree. So it's really flexible. You can do it like when you work full-time. So it's just definitely designed for people that work. It's not necessarily a choice you, you, know, you do if you weren't at home if you wanted to actually go to university and get a degree then that's probably the best way to do it however if you have a job and you work full-time and you still want to get a degree to say you know boost your cv or help you in the future then this is definitely the way to go about it in that respect hmm. and, and for your job so so explain to me your exact job title within williams f1 yeah so my official title or my contract is component assembly technician okay. so that 
involves literally every single component that goes into the car comes through our department and we get it from complete bare metal we will then process everything we send it off to machine shop we follow that component through all of its stages until it gets back to us ready to be assembled so a lot of our job is pre-assembly servicing um just generally taking care of the parts that go on the car and then when we're happy we've been through all our checks and that it's safe to run on a car we will then hand it over to the race team mechanics and it's their job to then fit it to the car so. mm. Okay, interesting. Uh, T, let me ask you the same question. Did you study, what did you study at university? Did you do university? What was your background? Um, so I didn't go to university. I uh, just did uh, three years at college doing motor vehicle engineering. Uh -huh. um, and then obviously I got my job at Team Sport. Um, and then literally worked my way up in Team Sport and then got training whilst I was working at the same time. Um, just coming in on my days off, getting to know more about the carts and how they work and stuff like that. I did have like a mechanical background anyway, so I knew how things worked and then I just kind of just got stuck in really. Interesting. Cleo, there's a question here from Katie, which maybe you'd be best to answer. Um, is motorsport engineering becoming a bit more diverse now? And how would you guys want to improve the diversity? And maybe we'll ask everyone this one, but Cleo, let's, let's start with you. Yeah, I certainly think it's definitely more diverse now. I mean, I've been sort of mechanical and motorsport now for a couple of years um definitely in the last couple of years i've seen a lot more women in motorsport um you know i used to be sort of be one out of a team of 20 um sort of one female to sort of 20 guys on a team so there's definitely been a lot more the last sort of three four years that i've noticed um but yeah, i think as well i think it's just like things like this like the webinars that you're doing obviously it's a good way of showing that you know we do exist and we are out here and we you know we do these kind of jobs um, you know, I definitely think that would probably be the best way just to highlight it um, to show that these roles are available to women if they're interested. Um, like I said, engineering, mechanics, um, I mean, there is so much to motorsport, you know, it's really, there's a lot of, sort of variety to it. So, yeah, it's obviously, like I said, just sort of getting more exposure to it, I guess, would be a great way. Yeah, talking about it, talking about yeah, it is always a a way to get which is why it's so good that all these questions are coming in we'll try and get to as many of them as we can of course charlie and um, how about you? Have, you have you noticed more women being involved in the in the touring car paddock has there been more of a, a buzz around uh, females yeah definitely um it's funny actually just looking today we've had our media day today so we've just done the launch of the uh, for the new season of touring cars today um down at thruxton and at one point we had a we've had a test session this afternoon and just looking down the pit lane i think in probably about uh, four or five consecutive garages there were women standing outside actually ready to do the hands-on roll ready for the car to come in to do pit stops to do um, you know a, a number of different things but going back to when I first started my first year in touring cars was 99 and I think I was probably the only female at the time um, I then I then went off and did uh, world rally for about 10 years and when I came back it was very much similar. There were still not many women around, but just over the last couple of years or, or sort of four or five years, I'd say, um, all of a sudden there are so many more women doing different roles in different teams. Um, and it is just so great to see. Um, it's a shame that it's kind of taken uh, that a long time, well, at that sort of time to, to actually happen. But but now it is happening. It seems to be, um, you know, just just seeing seeing women doing these roles. It just just goes to show people can can see the the women doing it and we're you know we can inspire other other women to to get involved and 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 let them know that it is accessible to to them and in Aaron in Formula One obviously we've seen drivers like Lewis Hamilton make sure that they say congratulations to the boys and girls in in the in the factory and various drivers make sure that they do mention that at the same time in formula one are you seeing that there is more changes now or is it still quite hard when you hear a certain driver say thanks to the boys at home and you think it's not just the boys uh yeah you know what? I, I do hear that and i don't let it bother me because you know if it bothers me then i'm in the wrong industry mm -hmm. um you've, you've you've it's brutal and you honestly do have to have a thick skin but you shouldn't let that put you off um in Formula One, I've definitely seen a difference in the last few years. However, when I was in, I was in Saudi and Abu Dhabi last year and maybe mechanical wise, maybe two, three mechanics in the whole pit lane that are women. Um, you get the, there's more engineers and stuff as well, but there's definitely, I think F1 is lacking 
behind a lot of other championships. I think there's a lot more to do in Formula One. And I think it is purely because a lot of women just don't think it's possible. You know, they don't see women on TV, so they don't think it's an option. I remember when I was growing up and, you know, growing up, I'm not that old anyway. (laughs) Um, But when I was younger um, and used to go to the track, my dad was a motorsport fan and we had family that were mechanics and working in the industry already. So I went to Sneston back in 2014. It was my first race weekend and my first time at track. And the only exposure I had to women at a racetrack was grid girls. And not that I have anything against grid girls at all, because I've done the role myself and I thoroughly enjoy it. You know, there's nothing against that. However, when you go to the track and that's all you see, you then don't think that there's any other option for you as a woman in motorsport. However, that that is completely wrong. All of the opportunities are out there, you know, especially big teams like Williams. They don't care if you're a boy, girl, whatever. It's if you can do the job that's all that matters you know they employ you because of your skills and your talent and the fact that you can do the job role not because of your gender and I think a lot of people need to realize that that um you know it's it's not as scary as it might look you just have to take it and I work with a really really great group of lads and I'm very very lucky that actually all of them look down on me like a little sister and they literally protect me with their life like when we were at the track you know they look after me so well and I wouldn't have it any other way you know they're all brilliant and they all treat me equally to how they would treat anyone else so it's it's definitely scary when you look in but actually when you get in and you realize it isn't that bad and everyone is great so yeah. far that I've noticed anyway <laughs> there's another question that's come in that's sort of um it's for you Erin again it's, yeah. it's very similar um, you sort of answered a little bit says what's it like to mostly be working uh, in a male environment do you have any tips though for women who want to work with the team um, not specifically in mechanics also yeah so to be fair I've always been one of them people that gets on better with lads than girls just because I find that they're less drama <laughs> um, so the guys that I work here with are absolutely brilliant um I don't think you need any tips I think if you find somewhere where you fit in then it won't be any different you know I am treated exactly the same as they treat their best mate you know I don't find that it's any different um all that I can say though I have worked for teams in the past where I have not got on so well when I was self-employed and I had some bad experiences and you shouldn't let that put you off because it's it is not like that everywhere this was a very very rare occasion and what I did was I hid it and I didn't tell anyone I didn't tell the team manager until I let it happen all season because I thought it would be easier for me to keep quiet and that if I spoke up no one would believe me and looking back on that now this was a couple of years ago you know I was younger I was naive I was new to it and my only tip now would just be to speak up for yourself because I look back now and realize that that actually upset me quite a lot through that year and it's not something we should have to deal with so if I, my only tip is make sure you are heard make sure you have a voice and just stand up for everything that you believe in because it's really really important because if you don't say anything no one will care you know there are as one of the quotes we have here there are no friends in motorsport and as you know brutal as that is you know sometimes it is true you know every man is here for themselves or every woman is here for themselves and you have to speak up and talk for yourself because if not you won't be heard so mm. Um, if you are just joining us now, make sure that you um, and you want to see what we are talking about beforehand. We've uh, been here for about 20 minutes or so now. You can make sure you go on the Girls On Track UK Community Facebook because all the webinars and everything on there. Also on the Motorsport UK uh, YouTube channel as well. Make sure you join um, all the rest we've been doing as well. Um, there's been plenty going on as well. During the pandemic and things like that, we've been doing plenty of webinars. So make sure you, you check back as well. And um, moving on from that, Erin, um, a similar one. I'll ask um, Charlie, I'll ask you this one. And I, I think I'll ask all of you because it's quite interesting in, in general from um, Kira says, uh, what's uh, did the lack of female role models in the era ever put you off from doing the career you wanted to do? Charlie, you mentioned that, you know, not a lot of uh, women were involved in the sport when you got involved. It must have been quite a nerve wracking experience to come into the paddock and be one of the only women. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, but I'm, I guess, I suppose uh, looking back on it now, I was one of those, those people that, uh, and still am one of those people, that if somebody tells me I can't do something, then I'll just go out and just prove that I can do it. Um, I've always been like that. And uh, before I got my first job, I remember being um, 
with a group of friends and being just spectating at motorsport and saying that looks just incredible just the noise of the cars the whole atmosphere everything kind of like gripped me it was the first time i'd been there um uh, to see it live and and i kind of remembered sort of saying i want to do that for a job and somebody actually turned and it was a friend of mine actually turned around and said nobody will employ you because you're a woman and i was like really and i mean this is going back to like the mid 90s and i just thought well no that's not right because you know if it's something that you're passionate about and something that um you know you really want to do then i'm a great believer in just going for it and that is what i did um i wasn't at the time i'd already sort of finished school and i was at college um and i'd already chosen my choices and there were nothing to do with mechanics um and nothing to do with engineering at all so um i just then used my spare time to um just go to every circuit that i could get to and every single um different championship that i could that i could get to and just got talking to people and, and just you know let me come and help let me come and help and and i think the fact that there weren't any other or not many other females there I, I you know thinking back on it I, I guess I don't actually think it really even occurred to me I was just so set on the fact that it's what I wanted to do um and I was so passionate about a motorsport that I wasn't just gonna, I wasn't gonna let anything stop me do it um and that's how I did it and I just I just talked to a lot of different teams a lot of different people offered my help um you know to start with free of charge just so i could learn the you know the trade if you like um and it, and it kind of went from there but but yeah I, I guess looking back on it i don't think it's i don't think it really occurred to me at the time um i was just really wanted to do it okay well how about uh, t obviously your um background was slightly different you didn't go through a, a degree process but for you getting into it how 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 did you sort of step into motorsport then what was your sort of background in terms of um of getting the first gig um so i was like really interested in um like karting in general so the outdoor karting indoor karting um, so I used to go quite often and then obviously I wanted to get a job as soon as um, I left, uh, well, as soon as I was at college really um, and Team Sport uh, was hiring and I literally got the job and then I just got a passion for it. It's just so fast paced uh, and there's always so much to do, like your day is always busy. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was... Um, Sorry, I forgot what the question was again. It's alongside of uh, the more women. What did I say? I'm trying to remember the question myself. I put it into the answered one. Now it was alongside the lack of uh, female role models within the sport. Um, was that was that unnerving for you uh, to get into it? I think my Wi-Fi is bad. Or <laughs> the connection is quite bad. Okay, we'll go, <laughs> we'll pop back to you, T. We'll go to Cleo just for a second then, and, yeah, and we'll, we'll right. head back to you. But um, female role models then, Cleo, did you have anyone that you sort of look to? I would say I have to admire Susie Wolf quite a bit. I know she's not quite sort of in the maybe in the same position as such as we are, but but still though, she's very um very independent. She's very sort of strong woman. She's very good in the role that she does as well. Um, I think she's really good um role model for those that are looking and obviously she works in a very high paced environment i think just goes to show you that know, again you can just see she's very successful and she can do what she does um so i'd have said susie wolf would have been absolutely one of mine and sabine smith as well i can't put that on side. i know she's a racing driver but i can't you know i can't put her in any way shape or form lovely personality you know it was great at what she did um you know so again definitely sort of probably the two people I'd say I'd sort of really look up to um in the world of motorsport and your role title explain exactly what your your title is what what are you classed as so I'm classed as quite literally just a motorsport mechanic that is what I do um so you're on the right webinar right then that's it yeah <laughs> I've come to the right place um yeah that would be so I mean I've, li I've literally recently just started a position so I'm actually a senior technician now um taking on the role of a couple of our toka cars that we've got uh -huh. um so something new for me again it's a totally new challenge for me as well um but again it's, i've got a lot to learn still which is great you know i love learning that's something that always keeps me interested in this kind of job you know because there's a lot of jobs that you could go to you know you sort of pick up something quite quickly and then you find that there's not a lot of change and people get bored of it um but with this that's one thing why i love most sports so much 
is that you know you could learn about one car but then again you have to learn something totally different so sort of the next season running a totally different car um so yes yeah, so this is a new role for me uh like i said senior sort of position as well so obviously i'll be managing those cars rebuilding uh, obviously doing all the management or running all the race weekends as well crew chief so there's a lot going on um but yeah, so that's kind of, I guess, my position this year. Um, and then with W Series, um, again, just be, again, most sport mechanic this year with them. It'll be my second year with them. So I really enjoyed that with them last year. It's totally new for me. I hadn't done any single seat to work before. Uh, it was really cool, obviously, because we got to follow the Formula One as well. So that was quite a sort of eye opener as well, sort of see that sort of firsthand. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the two things I'll be doing mostly this year at the moment. So, how many events are you doing? Um, with W Series or oh. in, in general? Yeah. Oh well, goodness. let's go I for let's, I, let's I dare, the W Series. Then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here all, we've only got a certain amount of time to go, so let's go W Series then. How are you doing for that? Um, yeah, so I'll be doing the full season with them. So we've got eight rounds um, right. with them, and there, there's a lot of flyaways this year as well. Mm. A couple of double headers as well. Um, we start in Miami in a couple of weeks' time. We do. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a nice way to start the, uh, the season yeah. off. Head to Miami for the new it track. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, there is a lot of questions coming in here about how you gain advice, like how, how you gain work experience coming into the industry, mm -hmm. how you get yourself into it, how, how you sort of open those doors for yourself. So Erin, let's, um, let's pop back over to you. And, and how, how can people, if they want to get involved more in motorsport it's as we all know motorsport can be quite a hard thing to get into and it is about just making those you know the step forward to try and get into it how, how did that sort of process work for you and what kind of advice can you give people you know is it the networking side of things is it is it the you know the the experience side of things how do you gain that work experience as well yeah so i first started out um with actually susie wolf's program dare to be different Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing I sort of got myself involved in when I realised this was a career I wanted to take. I was about 15 at the time and I approached a lady that works at Mercedes and we were at a sort of a communal get together event and we got talking and she was talking to me about their work experience programme. So luckily through her, I got a week's work experience at Mercedes Formula One team. Um, so I did that when I was in my last year at secondary school and so yeah, that on the first foot really, really tells you how important networking and communicating is because if I hadn't have had the guts to go up to her and introduce myself and tell her what I wanted to do, that never would have happened. So definitely being brave and selling yourself is very important. And if you don't have confidence in yourself, no one else will believe that. So you need to be really, really confident in yourself and talk to people, make sure you show that you're interested. You know, you don't have to have any experience, just make sure you have a passion and make sure other people can see that. That's really, really important. So networking, definitely. So I did my week at Mercedes and then I was very lucky that her partner actually worked at Toro Rosso as well. So the following year I did a week at Toro Rosso. Um, I was just about to start college at this point and then when I started college, luckily my college ran a race team in mini challenge. So our college tutor was our driver. So he would rag the car around the circuits at weekends and then we'd bring it back to college. We'd repair it. And then we got to go to the race weekends as well. So I did my two years while I was at college running the cars at the track. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's all down. That was definitely down to getting myself on the right course and I was very lucky that the co it doesn't run anymore, unfortunately, but the college course and the college that I went to was literally two miles down the road from my house. So I was in a very fortunate position. However, I'm sure most people listening know about the college in Silverstone. And there are a few others around the country that run a very, very similar program that are brilliant. And if you are at the age of finishing school and wanting to get into something like this, your best bet is absolutely to go to those colleges because they have the connections with all the teams over the country and they will put you in the absolute best position to get apprenticeships with the teams in their network. So that's very important. Get to college, get your experience, and then they can help you because they are the right people. Most of them have worked in the industry. They know what it's like. They will put you forward to lots of teams all over the country to get the best role suited for you. Then you have all of the options of tin top, single seater, karting. You can literally go in any route that you want to and they will put you forward and you can then run your apprenticeship through 
your college or you may finish your course and you could be recommended to these teams to start you know junior positions once you've finished so it's definitely about putting yourself out there and not being afraid I think I remember how I got the job I worked as a mechanic in the first year of W Series running and I got the job because I went and spoke to them at the Autosport Sports Show at the NEC and this is back in 2019 and I remember being really really nervous about it and my dad was with me he was like just do it you know what have you got to lose just go and speak to them and I went up to the stand pretty nervous and told them about what I did and that I was passionate and you know it'd be my first job since leaving college and they were like brilliant you know when can you start and I was shocked but because I showed that I had an interest and that I was willing to learn you know that attracts people to you and your skill set and what you can do so I definitely think being confident is important but networking for sure is definitely the main reason I got work experience and got myself forward and that's actually how I got the job at Williams I did a week's work experience here back in 2019 I think it was and ever since then I've been in contact with the car assembly build manager and he keep, he kept sending me job applications like, are you going to apply yet? <laughs> and it took me until 2021 last year to finally apply. Mm. And I got the job. So I think definitely having contacts in the right place is important. But the ways you can meet them, get to the track, get to as many events as you can, put yourself out there, do everything you possibly can to show that you're passionate about it and you'll be absolutely fine. Cleo would you would you agree that that's the the same sort of route that you found yourself in networking putting yourself out there having these conversations yes hugely um and it really does reflect on on yourself as well obviously being able to do that you know sort of in the teams that we've been and we work with um because they do notice that and people that you work with as well um they also know that or sort of notice that so yeah that's kind of sort of how I got in myself as well um I had no experience I had my own track car that I used to sort of work on myself um probably was about 20 I had a couple of friends that worked in motorsport mechanics and I sort of really enjoyed what they used to do um so I thought you know how do I get into that obviously I knew no one would ever give me a job because I had no experience ever working with a racing team um or even mechanically so I kind of went down the same route um I must have emailed about 20 teams within sort of a three hour drive so I used to go to my day job um do five day week and then my two days off, I managed to get in. I mean, literally only three teams out of those 20 that I emailed ever got back to me, um, one of which um, I went ahead with. And yeah, that's obviously in my spare time, I'd go up there, work with them on my days off. Um, on Sundays when I was off, I used to go up there after work Saturday, um, help them set up and then carry on as well sort of into the race weekend Sunday pack down and go home back to work Monday sort of my day job so yeah you do definitely need to put yourself out there um you know probably be quite willing to sacrifice a lot of time that you've got but again if that's something that you really want to do it, it won't be hard you know you won't sort of, you know feel it too much because you're doing something you really enjoy um you know I don't regret it at all um my only regret is that I probably didn't do it sooner because it's something I'd wanted to do for a couple of years and I just I just honestly didn't know how to do it um, I don't have anyone that works in motorsport. Um, I don't have any family members that sort of really work in motorsport either. So it's kind of kind of a bit of a loose end all the time, sort of wondering how to get into it. So yeah, definitely, definitely would say um, networking is a huge thing as well. And even still sort of, you know, trying to get into a couple of things I'd like to do in the next couple of years. Like again, it was still probably quite difficult. Um, but again, if you just put yourself out there, be persistent, um, you know, it should sort of hopefully come through. So lots yeah. of experience though. Experience is good. Very, very good. And then the qualification backs it up. Absolutely. But experience is, is vital, definitely. Yeah. Charlie, how about you? If if you're um I know I mentioned at the beginning your your 4G might be a bit dodgy, but I think you're still with us. Yeah, I think we're we are en route now. So um, <laughs> but I think I'm still here at the moment. Um yeah, completely agree with everything. Um that's just been said really. It's so important. It's um, that's how I got into it. You know, I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, I made sure that I was, I was lucky. I lived quite close to Silverstone. So it was quite easy for me to go and um, sort of at weekends just to, to, to just go and see what was going on, whether it was club racing, whether it was, you know, and the bigger, the bigger series that were going on there. I, I, I spent most of my weekends there just walking around, looking what was going on, just watching everything. Um, just taking everything in really and getting to talk to people and talking to people about the jobs that they did um 
you know, uh, and finding out about the different roles that were all involved um, in, the, in with the teams uh, and what different roles that you could do. Um, and it certainly paid off there because, again, that's that's kind of how I got into it. One of the guys after a while had said, look, you know, you, you keep turning up. So quite clearly you're interested. <laughs> um, if you if you really want to do this, he said, I run my own car at weekends. Just come along. Um, I will teach you the basics to get you started just to see if you um, if it's really what you want to do. Um, and obviously, I just snapped his hand off because it's what I wanted. It was what I wanted to do, and, and that's how it went for the first year. And I, again, it's long hours. You travel into circuits. I was doing another job full time, and and then heading off on a Friday night, like you know, like it's already been said. And it, it is long hours, but if it's what you want to do, um, then the long hours well, is part is part of it, you know. Uh, and, it, and it's worthwhile when you doing something that you really really enjoy. Um, it kind of like evens itself out really um, and that's that's how it started and just from from doing the year years experience and then getting to circuits talking to different teams talking to different people um, and motorsport is a, it's a small small world when especially when you're doing a championship like the British Touring Cars or uh, we're also doing um, TCR UK this year or we have done for the last couple of years and you get to see the same faces and you get to see um you know the same people when you go to the to these um championships and you know it's people understand that that's what you want to do and if you keep turning up they will give you a chance come and give us a hand and, and that's where it's uh, that's kind of how it all started for me really i would say that's um that's a very good thing to say to anybody that wants to work in motorsport no matter what you want to do if it's you know the mechanic side of things it's the engineering side of things it's the media side of things it is that sort of turn up and show that you are willing to to learn and get the experience in that sort of way and erin you sort of touched on that as well and um, clear a couple of questions for you come in regarding um w series um amy's asked how hard was it to get into the role with w series but there's another question on top of that from natasha um, mentioning how do you get into motorsport when you haven't grown up around it? I know you mentioned that your family weren't massively into motorsport. So firstly, the W Series question, and then how, how do you get into it when, when you're not sort of brought up around it? Yeah, so W Series, I'll be honest, that took me about four months to get into that. <laughs> it wasn't, again, it wasn't easy. Um, that was a case of, I knew when I finished the, I think the season it was 2020. Yes, 2020 I finished. Um, I saw obviously W Series were sort of racing again next season. So I thought, yeah, I really want to get into that. It's a case of, again, how do I get into that? Who do I need to speak to? Um, but yeah, I was, I was on a bit of a chase on that for four months, trying to find out who to contact. Um, tried to contact a few different teams. Um, obviously, I know the team that ran it the season or the season before the first year, um, but they said that they weren't running the cars again. So they sort of pointed me in a few directions, but again, there was sort of no kind of inclination as to who was running the cars. Um, but yeah, and then I found out probably about six weeks prior to the first round. Um, and then, yeah, just sort of sent my CV through um, kind of what I was looking to do. I actually initially volunteered to do it for free. I said, I'm not bothered about being paid. I just want the experience and I want to go and do it and learn something new. Um, and obviously it'd be a great sort of season for them sort of following Formula One. So it's good, really great experience for me. Um, but the networking that's come from that has been totally valuable. Um, so, so, yeah, so it was quite difficult to do that. Um, again, even still, even with experience, it's still quite sort of long-winded to get into the roles that you want to with the teams that you want to um so yeah that was quite a quite a long one <laughs> but it was worth it and it paid off in the end yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then your other question was i'm trying to find it now which was the other one uh oh about not having any motorsport experience or background uh yeah so that's that's very much myself i didn't have any um uh, motorsport experience or any background at all with my family uh, like i said i had two friends that worked with teams but again that was probably when i was about 22 i kind of met them so it's quite late um sort of considering you know i didn't come out of school and do straight into motorsport or grow up with it um so yeah so i guess it was just a case of sort of that was kind of off my own back sort of really sort of finding ways to get into it and how i could do that um so again i just volunteered Work with the team for a season for like, totally volunteering, um, just getting experience as much as I could. And then at the end of that season, they asked me to come back and actually work in a pay position for them the following year. Um, so I did the whole season again with them. And then again, sort of branched off into a few other series last year, just sort of get some more experience. And 
kind of here we are today so again it's just a case of you know putting yourself out there and just showing that you're willing to go and learn and that's kind of what it's down to at the end of the day it's down to you as an individual and kind of what you want to do and sort of how your work efforts um efforts are and that yeah. was, that's what we'll show really and what's the diversity like within w series is it still predominantly male at the moment that are you still um, the minority yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it is really. Um, I'd say there's probably about 10 to 15 women that I work with um, throughout the entire team. So that's varied through uh, systems, um, engineers, mechanics as well. So there's quite, a, there's still sort of a few. Um, I think there's some new, there's actually some new uh, females this year, which would be quite interesting. A few of them that I know of actually, so it'd be nice to sort of see them um but yeah there's still quite a big gap even still um sort of between men and women on a single team working together but it's, it's moving in the right direction though so that's that's the main thing hmm. um erin a question here that's come in um probably one you can ask because i think you've worked you mentioned you'd worked in w series as well in 2019 yeah. and then of course in formula one and um, how different is the environment between with, between the two obviously very different especially yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I worked in both F1 and W Series in 2019, and they are incredibly different paddocks. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just add to what Cleo was talking about, actually. So <laughs> back in 2019, when I did W Series, there were two female mechanics, and that was it. Wow. Um, we, Me and one girl that I'm still very close with, who is now actually an engine tech at Red Bull, you know, we've both progressed into F1, which is really good to see. Um, but yeah, so it's, de it's definitely moving in the right direction for sure. But um, so your question about the difference in the paddock. So obviously, W series being a junior category, there is when you're in it, you think there's a lot of pressure. However, when you get into F1, it is a completely different ball game. You know, there is so much responsibility on you. And like my role when I'm at the track, I am responsible for my whole department. Every single part that goes on the car is my responsibility. And I'm in charge of both cars for all the parts that go on both cars. So especially in my role, the pressure is super high. And especially what the stakes are, you know, a lot of our components are safety critical. So ultimately at the end of the day, if that fails, it comes back on me. So um, I'd say there's definitely a lot more pressure in F1, but however, those things are still really, really important in a lot of the junior categories. And again, with W Series, um, it was a new championship, obviously, when I started off in it. It was its first year, um, so there were definitely teething problems, nothing major. Um, the system and how it all worked got a lot of criticism from the public. Um, not necessarily things I believe in, but there was definitely a lot of stick for the championship and how it was run. And you definitely felt that in the paddock, for sure. I'm hoping Cleo can say that that's improved you know as it's gone on in the years but I definitely remember feeling like there was such a negative image portrayed on the W Series Championship and there shouldn't be because it's a brilliant initiative and it gets women into motorsport which is great I think and like you said there's definitely a lot more women working in it not just driving now to what it was so there's definitely a lot of difference between the paddocks but I think that's the same for any championship and any championship again that's at the top of its game you know like Charlie and British Touring Car you know that is the top of British motorsport and British GT as well and then you know you have the World Touring Car Championship you know every championship at the top of its game you know there's going to be more pressure but that's still the same in all the junior formulas as well I found it's just it's just a different environment and it's just a completely different ball game with what you are expected to do and what side of your role is seen. But I don't like that to put you off because it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Cleo, do you have anything to add on that or? Yeah. Uh, no, very much the same. I mean, I've, obviously I've seen, I've seen the, the Formula One bit lane as such, I see the working on it, um, but I've not actually worked on it myself personally. Um, but yeah, I, I'd imagine it is probably very different um i know as such when it comes to actually working on the cars the roles are quite different as well i think everyone might be able to touch more on that um but i think you're more sort of solely dependent on parts of the car sort of as front and rear sections um corners as such rather than having an entire car so yes yeah, so you're solely independent on on that kind of car that part of the car itself in formula one um so yeah i'd imagine it's actually very very different um, I mean, the W Series cars are essentially Formula 3 cars, sort of slightly toned down a bit. So, again, there's probably quite a big difference there. 
between sort of Formula One and Formula Three sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it is two very different places to be and to work in, even though they share sort of the same weekends as such. Uh, to, to kind of you mentioned there, you've never you've never worked in F1, but you've overlooked the paddock and seen what's going on. Is your career aspiration to to move into to F1, or are you happy with where you're doing and you know the W side of things? What's what's your kind of future goals? Um, yeah, no, I'd love to to work in Formula One. Uh, I think that's kind of everyone's, or well, potentially maybe everyone's, or majority of people's sort of goals is to get there. So, yeah, I, would, I definitely feel like if I if I get there, I, I don't know, I don't know how. I might actually cry a little bit. I'm not a very emotional person, but I think I might. <laughs> I just cried a bit like I a, you know, I actually, you know, <laughs> I, I set out what I wanted to do, and I actually, you know, I actually did it. And I think that would be a bit of a, yeah, probably, probably a bit heartbreaking, sort of a bit like a, you know, I actually did it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd love to to work in Formula One, um, but again, it's that same process again of just getting as much experience as possible and talking to the right people and just sort of you know trying to get yourself in there. Uh, you know, and just showing that, you know, you are capable. Um, I've never worked on a Formula One car before, but hopefully so you can learn quickly and pick up on it and just show that you're keen to learn. And so that might be, you know, a way in somehow. Um, so we shall, we shall see. Maybe the next, <laughs> the next webinar could be a different job role. <laughs> <laughs> we never know. We'll, we'll keep in touch. We never we'll know. <laughs> um, Charlie, how about you? Obviously a, a bit of a different... Um, background in terms of how long you've been in motorsport compared to to Cleo and Erin but was your goal always to to get into F1 or you sort of was the was the goal touring cars or where was it no the, the goal was F1 um uh, sadly never got there probably too late for me now but still uh, time Charlie still time never. <laughs> never. But, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, it was definitely my goal it's something that you know obviously still really interests me and when I when I am lucky enough to be at home for a weekend and actually get a chance to watch a race, then, you know, it's still one of the biggest things that, you know, I look forward to over the weekends. But, um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm really lucky that I did what I wanted to do. I kind of, I didn't have a plan because um, my route into it was, was, you know, fairly unplanned, if you like. I was just determined that I was going to do something in motorsport. Um, so I kind of just, just went along with whatever was offered to get the experience. Um, and to say that I worked for, for the Subaru World Rally Team for, for sort of the best part of 10 years, it's just incredible. Um, you know, and that to me was it's one of the highlights of, of my career. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Really, really great. Um, and just to see something slightly different from, from circuit racing, which, again, I love. I've done that for, for many, many years as well. So um, I love them both equally, but they both offer something slightly different. Um, so yeah, no, no major regrets. Um, and as you say, maybe there is still time. <laughs> hmm. Of course there is. Of course there is, Charlie. There are a lot of questions that are coming in about internships, apprenticeships, how you sort of got into this. But we we did cover that just at the beginning. So if you do want to um, look back, you can head on to the um, Girls on Track UK community Facebook page. Also, there's the Motorsport UK YouTube channel, which has a little bit about the background of our panellists and how they got into it and things like that. Um, so the programme, obviously, Girls on Track UK um which is managed by most sport uk that's all on there and, and we are recording this so if you want to look back but there is an interesting one from from katie here erin let's move this to you just um there's a couple of questions that have come in about the internship and the apprenticeships and what you kind of study and, and like i said we did mention that but there is an interesting one from katie because i did fail my master gcse oh. so it's always nice to know that you can fail things and and uh, to do your job you want to do but she's asking um do you, if you do fail certain gcses or certain things can you still work towards being a mechanic you know if you have those setbacks can you come back with without the academic stuff to back you up um yeah absolutely you know in my experience i was very lucky i've always been quite academic and i did well at school however I know plenty of people that I work with that are incredibly successful in Formula One and they didn't get a single GCSE. You know, that is absolutely not something that you should let set you back. You know, my, I think the entry requirements for my mechanics course were four Ds. So do not let GCSEs and exams and the academic side of things put you back because honestly, what will get you through this is your passion and your determination to learn. You know, you don't have to be good with numbers to rattle a spanner on bolts in a car you know it's not important and a lot of people I know I was told at school 
oh, you never, you'll never succeed if you don't get A's and if you don't go to uni. However, you will have the most incredible career without any of that. And you should definitely not let that set you back because I'm only doing a degree because I was self-employed and got bored in my time at home. That's purely the only reason I did it. Um, not because I needed it to get to where I am now. I did it purely out of curiosity and interest to better myself. However, it is definitely not necessary to get into this job at all. I think do it if it's something you want to do and if it's something you enjoy. However, absolutely do not put that extra pressure on yourself because working in motorsport as a mechanic, as the other ladies have explained, is incredibly tiring and incredibly hard work. And mostly all of your free time will be spent at the track or at the workshop. You know, it's late nights, it's weekends, it's long hours, and you have to be determined to do that. So I'm slightly regretting doing my degree right now because I'm in my last year and I'm here. Knackered. You know, I'm knackered, yeah. Um, you know, I've been here, you know, at least six out of the past 10 weekends. You know, it, it is mad. However, yeah, don't let the academic side of things get you down because it will not stop you getting where you want to be if you have the passion for it. We'll come back to a, a point you made in a, a minute, Erin, which is actually going to be about your fitness and because you mentioned there, it's, it's, quite, it's quite tiring. But Cleo, you were just yep. um, nodding your head just then about yeah. some of the stuff that we were saying, obviously the apprenticeship side, failing your GCSEs or, or whatever it is and, and coming back from that. But you were nodding your head, so I wanted to come to you. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, because I, I was homeschooled as a kid. So I, um, I've only got two GCSEs, maths and English, um, because uh, at home you couldn't do science, you didn't have chemistry and this and that, there's only something you could learn from home. Um, so yeah, so it just goes to show you very much can do our line of work, um, you know, and get into those roles with essentially, in my case, probably any qualifications. Um, experience was definitely sort of a winner there for me um I've actually sort of backtracked tracked a bit so I've kind of done it the opposite way around um probably got more of the experience first and then I'm um, just doing a two-year course at the moment um quite literally just supposed to vehicle technology course um again just something that I wanted to do off my own back because I don't really have a lot of qualifications as such I've done qualifications and other things but just not sort of motorsport based so um yeah so I've backtracked and sort of gone into that at a later stage um but again if that's something if you wanted to do that you can always come back to that at a later stage uh, but it, like i said work experience is probably the best way to go um again mechanically sort of numbers wise other than sort of like patching alignments those kind of things sort of understanding the car that way they're probably mostly the numbers you're really going to need maybe fuel links or the kilogram amounts stuff like that um but mostly again the engineers if, you, if you're engineering though yes then i'd say you know you probably want to be a little bit keener on mathematics i'd say <laughs> um so but mechanically no they're yes uh, sort of experience is probably more the side of things um as opposed to not say you shouldn't get qualifications you shouldn't do good in school <laughs> I'm not letting you off there. I'm just saying. I mean, uh, <laughs> Katie, I failed well. math twice, so if you want to be a journalist, feel free to go down that road with your, with your rubbish maths. That's that's the yeah. way to go. Um, just to come back on that level of fitness, then um, that, that we've been asked by uh, by someone watching, it says, is there a certain level of fitness expected as a mechanic? Expected, or do you have to be? Um, uh, it, you, oh, go there. It's a necessity. It is absolutely 100% a necessity. Um, so it, when I was self-employed, obviously it was a little bit different, but however, since I've been here, we have mandatory fitness classes that we have to attend each week. And it is, you know, it's expected that we are at these classes. And um, this is not only for fitness, but it's to prevent us getting injured when we're doing our work as well. Because if we go down at the track, it's really, really, you know, it's not good. You know, that pulls us out of pit stop roles, that stops us doing our job. So um we're quite lucky we have a really really good gym and fitness center here that we have a, you know a fully functioning gym we have classes on every day of the week so I choose to attend classes by own choice and then we have um like a functional fitness and a yoga class that are mandatory um that are provide that are set to anyone that travels with the race team um again like I said this is not only to be fit but is to prevent us injuring ourselves say in pit stops you know that is very physically demanding especially in formula one with some of the weird positions you have to get into and we have a pit stop rig that we use here quite regimentally so it the fitness is there to look after us and keep us strong and to prevent us hurting our backs especially you know with all the heavy lifting 
and all the weird positions we have to get into to do stuff on the car. Um, but yeah, a good level of fitness for just general fitness purposes is is great as well because you know you can sometimes go not that it's good but you expect to go hours without eating um you can be running up and down pit lanes in red flags multiple times that's very possible pit stops are hard hot countries you know you've got to deal with dehydration and wearing your pit suit and sweating and you've got to be strong enough to physically deal with all of the demands that this will present you with and, and Charlie, I'm sorry, I don't know if you're still there. We're, we're just Charlie's on a, on the move yeah. today, so she's still there. What about you, Charlie? Is it something that you've had to find as well? Because with touring cars, there's a lot of, with most motorsport, by the way, if anyone wants to ever sleep in, don't get into motorsport. But, you know, with touring cars, there are lots of early mornings and you're at the track for a, for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, uh, everything that's just been said really as well, pit stops, uh, things like that, definitely strange positions that you get into. Um, lifting heavy equipment, you really have to look after your back. Um, prolonged things, even even when you're in the workshop building cars. Um, when I spent a long time building cars, then you find that you're actually leaning in a car through the door over a, um, your roll cage. Um, that can put pressure on your back. Um, so yeah, it's really, really important to, to kind of like maintain a, a really good level of fitness. And, and yeah, last year I did, I think two or three race weekends where Oh, we'll never find out what happened. She had a couple of race weekends where... We were stationed at one end of the pit lane and I we had a couple of red flags the way down to the, to the pit lane. And then if you get the second red flag, you've just got to go and do it again. So you do have to be prepared to to, to sort of like, um, you know, run and, and get things done, carry a lot of equipment. So looking after yourself... Um, Again, as a, you know, as has already been mentioned, there is it's, it's the protecting your body as well, not just the actual fitness for the running, but protecting your body, making sure that you don't injure yourself. Hmm. Okay, we've got a, a couple more questions in here. Again, a lot of questions coming in about what subjects should you take to be an engineer, and we we have covered that. So um, please just make sure you head back over to the uh, Motorsport UK YouTube channel and also the Girls on Track UK. Uh, community Facebook page because we have talked quite extensively about that and um, and hopefully they, that should answer some of uh, your questions. Um, a good one from Alice here, which is very nice. What's been your most rewarding moment that you've had so far as a mechanic? Erin, um, let's start with you. Well, um, Getting your job in well, F1, you said so, you're right. Yeah, well, before F1, let's go back. In, in, in general, my first podium was probably the best feeling. Um, I got that in when I was actually a mini challenge so I was 18 years old um running a paid driver that had come to the college and he said you know I want to give your students the opportunity to learn on a real car that isn't just the college car and I was given the opportunity to build that car through summer at college and then race it for the season and my first podium I got with him was my parents were there so it was really, <laughs> it was really nice um so there are a lot of really really good moments and then like I said when I I was actually in Dubai. Um, I'd been out there for six weeks with um, Asian Formula 3. Um, and I got the call from my contact at Williams to say that I'd been offered the job. And I was in the room with my friend and I literally just started crying. She was in the shower and I was banging on the bathroom door trying to tell her <laughs> what had happened. Um, so I think I think that was the moment when I'd realised that all of you know the bad comments, all of the hard work, all of the really really tough times had actually been worth it and it was literally that I could then finally prove to everyone that said that I was never going to make it that I had and that was such a surreal moment just standing there receiving that phone call saying you know you've done it you're 20 years old and you've just got your dream job in Formula One it was the most incredible feeling in the world um that was so so rewarding and then obviously in Hungary our first points with the team um, I wasn't there but that was insane you know f anyone looking in from the outside you know, well it's only eighth and ninth however you do not realize how much that meant to us as a team you know mm -hmm. that was so important to us and it's just the sign of things to come yeah. and again the other opportunities throughout the season where we score points was was incredible it was really really good to see you know a lot of people don't see the hard work that goes on here back at the factory you know you'd think well it's only two cars however 
the amount that goes on behind the scenes is is ridiculous so it's it's really really nice to see us be rewarded for our actions and another point that's a little more sad but um obviously when frank passed away we did a tribute in saudi that i was lucky enough to be there for and before the grand prix all williams team members were walked onto the grid to stand around a photo with all the drivers and i remember as we were walking onto the grid all of the people that were in the grandstand down the pit lane were all applauding us and i think that was the moment when i walked on track when i realized you know that i'd, I'd made it and I'd achieved my goal and my dream and what I wanted to do. And yes, it was under slightly sad circumstances. However, it was at that moment when I realised that everyone there was coming together for us and our team and a Frank was the moment I realised that, you know, I'm really, really happy about where I am. So it, it, it's so rewarding. And that doesn't mean there aren't unrewarding mm -hmm. moments because sometimes it's really, really terrible. <laughs> but most of the time it's 100% worth it. Cleo, um, any any standout moments for you? Yeah, I think probably I would say, I think the first one would probably have to be sort of after that, kind of get my foot in the door into motorsport and then volunteering a lot that year. I mean, I had to think at most two days off a month. So it was quite a, <laughs> it, it was, it was, sort of a bit long-winded um and then kind of working that season but I think at the yeah. end at the uh the awards evening I was invited to at the end of the season and then um team owner sort of coming up to me and saying to me you know obviously sort of really impressed with your work work rate this year and, and we'd actually quite like to uh, employ you for next season you know is that something you'd like to do um so I think that was quite a big sort of you know achievement as well I guess really um and then probably again as well, um, so when I got that sort of confirmation through from W Series to happen for the series as well. Um, again, I was sort of pretty overwhelmed with that. I thought it was great. So again, I really wanted to get into it. It's just nice when things actually happen. Um, and then in general as well, um, I think a big maybe like rewarding moments would probably have to be as well um, in terms of actually just the amount of people that you get to meet as well i mean if there's one thing i love about this is you meet so many different people in so many different avenues um and honestly i've never had a bad experience at all ever once um, i work with lots of guys again women as well and everyone has just been amazing i think for that every time every time we work with a new team it's just, just it's just a really nice sort of place to be sort of since yeah. i've been here so yeah so those probably sort of main things for for me and you get oh, that yeah. lovely backdrop behind you. You're getting the lovely yeah, sunset going yeah. on there, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> lovely. Yeah, you work in motorsport. That's what it's like all the time. It never rains. Well. It's never <laughs> miserable on you, I promise. <laughs> it's always that beautiful. And um, Charlie, if you're still there, is, it, is there anything that stand out for you at all? Yeah, I mean, very similar. The first, uh, after I got my first job in touring cars, um, I think we won our first race. Uh, on the very first weekend that I, that I did, which was just unbelievable. Um, I, and that will always stay with me because it was so early on in my career. And, and yeah, I think the whole team was kind of in tears at the time. I certainly was. It was just, I didn't expect to go into my first race weekend and, and come out with a with a podium uh, or, or for a, with a win. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, podiums are always really, really special. Um, because you do put so much work into it behind the scenes um, and then obviously with um, with uh, Subaru when I was with them we won the world uh, world rally championship in 2003 uh, at the time I wasn't a traveling mechanic but I was back at based at the um, at the factory um, as a sub, a sub assembly technician um, and a group of us went down just to to, to watch and to see um, you know the car come over sort of like past the line as, as the champion to see the, the, the win and everything you just kind of feel a little bit of you know something that I've done there's you know I built those those uprights so I've helped assemble the rad packs that go on the cars and and bits and pieces like that and you just get this this feeling of pride you know I'm very very proud of what I've, I've done and it was it's just a great feeling so uh, so yeah, but there's lots of little moments as well, uh, loads of little moments, especially with um, the guys that I work with, they're all great, I, we get on really well, a lot of them I've known for, for many, many years, and and it's just nice to, to sort of like experience um, little wins um, with guys that kind of, like they, they become your family, you spend so much time with them that they do become like kind of 
the family away from home. So yeah, there is many, many positives. Yeah. Well, that lovely. Like that's such a nice, nice way to end it really to, you know, obviously there are lots of things that are quite tricky about what your jobs are, but the, the rewarding moments are the ones that I'm sure make it worthwhile. And um, like I mentioned, lots of questions that did come in about how to get into um, this side of things and the mechanic side of things. Um, if you head back to the Motorsport UK YouTube channel, you can listen to this whole webinar from the beginning and also head to the Girls on Track UK uh, community Facebook page, um, which should have the link on there and you can watch everything back. You can also join us as well. Make sure you get in, um, involved in the conversation because obviously these webinars happen every month and they're really interesting to get involved in and you can get your Q&As in. And I'm sorry if we didn't get to all of your questions, but we had so many come in. So um, sorry about that. But we just want to thank as well Girls on Track UK and most sport uk for uh, making this event happen which has been uh, fascinating for everyone to get involved in and had some really really interesting stories so thank you as well to our speakers and our uh, panelists for getting involved and your time as well because i know you're all at work basically <laughs> <laughs> so we really appreciate you <laughs> and your bosses giving us uh, time for that but do make sure you join our girls on track uh, uk community facebook page uh, you can join as a member it's all free so make sure you get involved and get involved in the conversation as uh, well there will be a link as well to this uh, webinar if you want to watch it back but um yeah final thanks and look out as well in your mail book uh, your mail boxes for next month's um june's theme it's going to be announced because obviously every month we have a different theme this one was mechanics so make sure you look out for for june i can't believe we're getting so far ahead in this year i can't believe what we're <laughs> the year's going past so quickly but um yeah do make sure you get involved and make sure yeah you join at the community page because we're always having these chats and it's so important so um the in our chat as well it's got the link to the girls on track uk community facebook page and as well the mailing list if you haven't joined so do make sure you join because there's lots of lovely things on there thank you so much you three for joining um, such a pleasure to talk to all of you and good luck for everything and have a lovely season. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to talk to you. Take all. care.